All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's enough dancing. That's enough dancing. How's the mic? How's the levels? Everything look good? Anyway, hi. Mike is good. Thanks, Zeus. Thanks for coming to hang out with me for a little bit. I had a haircut appointment this afternoon, which I forgot about. So that's the reason why I'm not doing like a regular show today. But um, we're here. And what I decided to do was have some food. Love the boa neck scarf. It's just a scarf. I actually got this shirt and this scarf at Goodwill recently. It's like my favorite place to shop because uh, you can get some brand name stuff at really affordable prices. Um, and I've been trying to coordinate. I like, I like to mix colors of pieces of clothes of the same color together. So <laughs> anytime I can do that. A lot of stuff that I have recently is um, yeah, hashtag sponsored. Sponsored by Goodwill. Uh, is this magenta color? Like, I've been slowly collecting pieces. I really like teal, and I like magenta. And I've been trying to put more of those pieces in my wardrobe. So. Have you ever... So, like, I like going to the hairdresser, and I need to do it, obviously. But it, it's like, every time you go... Um, like when, when the lady does it, she does it in such a way that it's not like the way that you do it. And it's always like you have hairdresser hair for like the first day and it's really awkward, but you got to do it right. And like, it's do totally not going to look like this tomorrow. It's too nice. Anyway. So, um, before we get started, I just wanted to talk to everybody about, um, stuff. So MVP and I, we went to the New England Veg Fest on Sunday, kind of spur of the moment. We weren't sure if we were going to go or not because of my work schedule. And it was raining and we spent Saturday all day, well I did anyway, outside in the yard. Um, I raked and I used the leaf blower to mulch leaves and I dug up two azalea bushes because they were old and gross. And then uh, I needed supplies for some gardening. So we went to Home Depot. And then when we got home, we planted a bunch of plants. And we killed another azalea. Uh, and Sunday morning, I was really, really sore. And we weren't sure if we were going to go because it was late. We didn't leave until 1230 or so. But we went, and it was a great time. And I made a slideshow for everybody to look at. So when we got there, there was a lot of people already, and they started this thing with uh, early admission where you can buy a membership to the group that runs it. Um, it's like a supporting membership type thing, like you would subscribe to a stream, basically. It was $6 a month per person. It gets you 10% off at um, area restaurants down there, which is a really good investment, but uh, yeah, we didn't do that. But uh, yeah, so uh, the members get in at 11 o'clock and then everybody else starts to come in at 12. And <laughs> did you guys see the cat in the background? <laughs> She's like rubbing her face all over stuff. Anyway, uh, and I heard that there would, be, there would be really long lines. So I didn't want to leave and be there right for 12 because we would just be waiting in a line and it would be dumb. But... So yeah, we got there probably around 1.30, 2 o'clock. Yeah, it was porchy. Um, and we didn't have to wait. We got in and we just started walking around. So um, the, one of the first things that we passed was this broccoli bar, uh, which was really cool. It smelled delicious and it had a huge line. Uh, they had dumplings, tempura, sticky rice, triple garlic broccoli. But it was super popular, and we didn't end up going there, but it looked really good. Um, so, walking around, we found some really cool stuff. This is my face when I was absolutely shocked to find something. 
And anybody who has been to uh, MVP's streams will know that uh, mushrooms is an ongoing joke or theme in the stream. And I was shocked and super impressed when I found mushroom jerky. It was actually really, really good. Mushroom jerky, yeah. So it's, um, I'm not sure which type of mushroom it's made out of. There was a lot of people around there, but I tried a bunch of different kinds. And it's really like, so it's not like Slim Jim texture or like, you know, compressed, compressed meat jerky, but like the more tender folly a party jerky but it is very jerky like in its in its te texture and flavor i liked it a lot i don't remember how much it was but if you guys want something that's high protein and, and lower in fat you should definitely check check out the mushroom jerky so after that we got some food we walked around the whole let me know where i can get some of that i didn't actually like look it up yeah I sh probably should have done that. I was going to get everything, like, all kinds of stuff together for you guys, like websites for all these foods that I have, but I ran out of time. Stream goals. Uh, so we checked out all of the food vendors and ultimately decided to go to a place called Belmont Vegetarian, which is in Worcester. They had a booth or a table set up. It was basically, like, uh, kind of like barbecue, but different, I guess. Their restaurant has a bunch of different stuff on the menu, so I feel like this combination of stuff was something that they did specifically for the Veg Fest, so I don't know if they have this stuff regularly. But yes, um, the restaurant is in Worcester, and what we got here was a combo plate, and we shared it. It was $18, which is pretty good for two people. It's about $9 each. Um, it had vegan mac and cheese, a uh, vegan pepper steak, which is... What? Oh, I can't point. <laughs> what that brown stuff is. Uh, collard greens and black beans. And it was so good. It was literally the best vegan food that I've had since moving uh, up to New Hampshire. It was delicious. So if you guys are ever in the Worcester area, I would definitely check out their restaurant. So how exactly did they do those pepper steaks? Well, I didn't really ask, but my guess is that it's uh, wheat gluten-based faux meat, um, and they probably marinated it, seasoned it, and then slow cooked it. It was really great. It was amazing. Um, and after that, it was almost like closing time. The, the hours are only 12 to 5 of the festival, so we decided to get ice cream. This is us waiting in the line for ice cream, and it's a soy-based soft serve from a place called Like No Utter. Um, I'm not sure if they were open before they went to this program. So when we were in Austin, they have um, a ice cream parlor there called Sweet Ritual. And it was my favorite place to go for any occasion. They have all different kinds of vegan ice cream there. And they make it with nut milks, but also like nut butters, like peanut butter. They make ice cream with peanut butter. It's the best ice cream ever. So they started doing this thing called Cool School, where anybody, for any reason, can come and learn how to make ice cream the way that they make it. So these people from Like No Other were one of their, um, I guess, students. I don't know if they had started the company before they went to the Cool School, but I remember when Sweet Ritual was first talking about their program, they mentioned uh, Like No Other as one of their, like, mentorees. So I had to get some. And when I end up, one day, la, 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 la. what I ended up getting was a vanilla soft serve with coffee sauce and toasted coconut on top. And it was really, really delicious. I definitely suggest that you go check them out. They're based in Rhode Island, um, but I don't remember where exactly. Um, but yeah, it was really good. And they do catering too. It's a food truck. So if you ever need like something for a party, you could definitely call them up. But that's it. That's all I got. So um, let's move me a little bit more over here. There we go. Because I'm done with the storytelling part of the show. So yeah. 
I had a great time, and I will definitely go to the next one. It, w- it was really easy to get there. It took about an hour and 15 minutes, and I had a great time. Um, knowing that Worcester is really close, I would actually consider going there regularly just for food. They do have, you know, different types of stuff you can do for fun. Um, but in addition to Belmont Vegetarian Restaurant, there's also a place called the Vegan Nest that I'd really like to go to. And there's a place in Lemonster, I think, called Roots, which is like a cafe and juice bar. They were also at the um, festival. That seemed really good. But all of these places had super long lines. And we're not line people. <laughs> so thankfully, the one to the line to the place we ended up going was really short. The longest line we had to wait in was the, um, the ice cream one. So, but yeah. Uh, So, is it an annual event? It is. Um, And the group that runs it has regular meetups. It's called Veg Worcester. They have um, meetups and fundraisers and other types of events, too. So, another restaurant in Worcester that they work with is called Loving Hut. Um, There's two locations, and it's basically vegan Chinese food. I've always wanted to go there. They had a booth at the Veg Fest. But again, it was a super huge long line. So if and when we go back to Worcester, I'm definitely going there to check it out because I haven't had Chinese food in a really long time. Um, we used to go to a restaurant called Payway in Austin and they have vegan friendly dishes there, um, which is the closest thing that we could get, but they don't have like the spring rolls or any fake meats. They just have this really good aged flavored tofu. Um, but I haven't had any of the, the super fun Chinese food stuff since I went vegetarian so um yeah so if you are interested you should definitely check it out um there's all kinds of festivals that happen in New England for vegan stuff but also for healthier stuff and um those fun runs and things in fact there's a there's a locally run um fitness run called the Wasson Pond Pounder where you can actually go and train on the obstacle course um, without the like the wooden things all set up but you can basically run it and there's a portion where you can run through the water and stuff but they do that every summer too so if you're ever looking for something fun to do New Hampshire is the place to be except also the rest of New England but whatever so yeah um the other stuff that I wanted to do was just show you some really cool... Hey, Blissy! I just wanted to show you guys some really cool things. Um, healthier snacks. And the theme for these, this episode, is that they're all grain-free, too. So the first thing that I have to show you is Samazon Acai Superfood Bites. And they're basically like little sorbet pops, but they're covered in chocolate. <laughs> well, maybe you can go next year. Maybe it'll work out. So they don't look look super appetizing. They look like a little poop. But they're really great. I really hate you right now. That looks yum. It is yum. So now I'm going to eat it, and then I'm going to show you on the inside. Yeah. Nom, nom, nom. Do you guys, um, have you had acai juice or sorbet or smoothie bowls or whatever? Hi, Cables. Right now, I'm eating acai super fruit bites, which are really delicious, covered in chocolate. And it's basically just lightly sweetened acai. It has a few ingredients to make it firm, but then it's dipped in dark chocolate. So each little bite. Oh no, the nutritional information is gone. Oh well. Oh, it says on here each bite is only 50 calories. So that's good.
<laughs> Acai tea. I'm not sure I've ever seen that anywhere, but it sounds really good. Felicity says, is it frozen? Yes. So these are like little ice cream truffle bites. And they're very flavorful. Doubt that we'd have that in Sweden. I don't know. But if you go to Sampazon's website, I'm sure they could tell you if you could get them there. Yes, keep frozen. So each one is 50 calories and it has only four grams of sugar. And that actually is important. So did you know that um, your blood sugar won't spike or has a tendency to not spike? If in your serving of food, it has less than four or less, less than five grams of sugar. Is it expensive? This box was $5.99 and there were nine in the box. So, I mean, you could do math, but I don't think it was that expensive. I mean, and it's really satisfying too. Like sometimes when you take home um, these little ice cream things, um, you're like, oh man, that was so good. I have to have another one. When, you know, this is good, but you're not like, oh, I just got to eat the whole box. It's like good in a healthy way. I've never thought to myself, I just got to keep eating these. Like if you, if you got a box of like four cashew milk ice cream bars, you'd want to eat two of them because they're so sugary and so full of fat that your brain is just like, eat, eat, eat. This does, it doesn't happen with these. So I'm definitely going to buy another box of these. I ate all these ones, but yeah, it's really good. And Samazon is a really good company too. They um, are active in preserving the rainforest because that's where acai comes from. Um, they reinvest in local charities, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so I definitely recommend these. Um, so next up we have this, yum. Yeah. Sacred Negers is now following. Thanks for the follow. If you're just now starting to watch, we are basically having some delicious snacks. Um, you just missed the Samazon acai truffle bite thingies. And now I'm going to have a Rebel Maca Mocha drink. This is not <laughs> low in sugar, uh, but it is delicious. It is basically a coconut milk beverage with herbal infusions. So this one in particular has chicory, which is very much like coffee, um, carob, coconut sugar, cocoa powder, acacia fiber, maca extract, vanilla extract, pink salt, koihala, and stevia. So one bottle is 13 grams of sugar so, I don't know what happened, but there we go. Thanks, Zeus. Um, it's really good. I've had this before, so I just wanted to show you. It's delicious. And it's energizing. So, maca is kind of something that they call, like, ginseng of the rainforest. It's stimulates your energy without giving you jitters. It's not like caffeinated. So you have both energizing properties in here. You have the maca and you have the cacao, which are going to give you caffeine, but also like stable energy boost. Are you guys familiar with this brand? They have a bunch of different flavors. The, um, Mako Cold Brew is another one that I really like. Reishi Chocolate, also delicious. Reishi Chocolate meaning Reishi Mushroom. So it has Reishi Extract. But this one is really good. It has 4 grams of protein and it has 10% of your recommended amount of calcium. So that's pretty good. It's also high in iron and magnesium. It's a little high in fat, but if you only have this one bottle and you have a pretty low fat diet, you don't really need to worry about it. <laughs> Zeus 
Zeus says, this is your cheat day, isn't it, Clem? Kappa. <laughs> Cable says, I might be, or at least design-wise, like I have, I might have seen it in passing. Yeah. So not all of their flavors are vegan, if anyone cares. There's one that has honey in it, but whatever. Um, they're all really delicious, and if you're craving like a milkshake or something, this is a much better alternative. It's dairy-free, and it's lower in sugar than if you had a milkshake made out of ice cream. So like a serving of ice cream will have like 40 grams of sugar in it. This only has the 13. So comparatively, that's really good. Okay. Lucy says, I'm glad you're not one of those vegans who are so anal about anything not vegan. So I'm not vegan because I want to be vegan, you know? Like I'm vegan because it's good for me, but mostly because I was vegetarian before Sorry guys, my phone is making new voicemail. Well, my phone didn't ring, so thanks, phone. Um, do you ever have that problem where your phone starts doing stuff and then you can hear it in your headphones, like the electricity goes do 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 do. Stop. Okay. What I was gonna say <laughs> is that I was vegetarian for a long time. I was vegetarian for 20 years. I started as a vegan, um, and when I realized that I had a really bad relationship with food, I stopped. I basically abandoned it and just went regular veg. I ate seafood occasionally, but it's been about 20 years since I started, and I know that it's a struggle. It's I'm a Buddhist, so I think that um, life is suffering, so everything is hard and it doesn't matter to me whether or not you can do the things that I do. I don't care. So everyone's fighting their own battles. You guys are so great. <laughs> so we're going to try another thing and um, I've got a couple different ones to choose from. So let's take a break from the chocolate and we're going to do vanilla. So Cocoa Thins, snackable cashew cookies, vanilla. Excuse me. So these ones are actually still pretty good for you. So they've got eight cookies is a serving size. Let's see how big they are. I actually haven't had these ones before. Okay, these are pretty good size. They're thin, obviously from the name. So eight cookies is a serving size. That seems like pretty good. This is four right here. So like two non-thin cookies maybe. So there's 14 grams of fat in a serving which is about half the recommended amount. So considering that I'm going to be drinking this drink, I might reach my recommendation of fat today. Uh, calories 170, protein 3, and sugar 6. So actually with, for sugars, it's pretty good. So these are made with coconut, cashews, coconut sugar, cassava flour, which is um, yucca root. It's a fancy way to say yucca root. Sea salt, vanilla, and almond. So let's see how these are. They're crumbly. Hmm, these are good. Blissy says fried yucca with pickled cabbage is amazing. It sounds like a good combo. In America, we, we just usually have yucca fries, but indigenous folks make like a yucca mashed potato stuff, which I expect is really good. You can get yucca fries at Whole Foods on the hot bar, which are pretty good. They're kind of more like, um, like mashed potatoes deep fried. 
I've had yucca fries at the Native American Museum at the Smithsonian, which are very different than those ones. They're actually like really firm, like an actual potato, but they're both delicious. And these are really good. So if you ever see these anywhere, you should definitely pick them up. I don't remember how much these were though. Um, it was probably around five dollars though. Mmm. So you can definitely taste the cashew and the coconut. It's like a good combination of the two. Which I'm not sure I've ever had them together before, so that's great. The one thing I can say is that you don't really taste the cassava flour at all. It mustn't be in there very much. Like, it's probably just in there as a binder. Hi, Rusty. So yeah, that's amazing. So there's supposed to be three and a half servings in this bag. I'm not sure it's going to last that long. But I'll try. Okay, so I have one more sweet thing, and then I'm going to switch to a savory thing. <laughs> so, this one here is called a beauty bar. It's basically nuts and chocolate with chicory, like in the drink. So Belgian chicory root fiber, American walnuts, chocolate liqueur. A, a specific type, <laughs> it does look like soap, a specific type of chocolate called Calibo, which is from Europe, Belgium, maybe? I looked it up. Unsweetened coconut, chia seeds, hemp seeds, green tea extract, and rosemary extract. All right, Zeus, thank you. So, <laughs> oh God. So this also is about $4. This, guys, just so you can see it, this, they're saying, is two servings. So, a one serving, half of the container, is supposed to be 120 calories. So, if you eat the whole thing, it's 240 calories. Still not bad. A lot of, like, protein bars will still be around the 200, 220 calorie mark. So, in one serving, two grams of protein, four if you eat the whole thing. Sugars, now this is crazy, guys. One serving, two grams, whole bar, four. This is really sweet. It's delicious. I've had this before. If you are able to find these in a store and you want a candy bar, this is what you should get. It is actually not bad for you. It's basically nuts. I know you can't see it, sorry. It's called a beauty bar. It's B-U-D-I-B-A-R. They're actually made in Massachusetts by a company called Bridge Foods. But yeah, it's really great. And I'm going to open it up and show you what it looks like. I get these all the time. It's really gooey. <laughs> it's like caramel on top. I love it so much. It basically tastes like chocolate and walnuts, but it's good. It's a little chewy.
It's like one of my favorite things ever. Mmm. Felicity, yes. Two servings for a child, maybe. I agree. I noticed on another one of my favorite snacks, um, Hail Mary makes, um, they call them tarts. And it's basically a little, um, a little pie. It's made out of almond flour, coconut oil, maple syrup, chocolate. The package used to say two servings. Now it just says one. They're, at least they're being realistic about it. I think on sometimes, sometimes with like junk food, they don't want to scare you. So they'll say it's more servings than it actually is. I'm hoping maybe people won't notice the fact that it's supposed to be more than one serving. I don't know. Like this, this is one bottle. The serving amount, serving size amount is one bottle. That's exactly what a serving is. <laughs> it was the container. But yeah. So even if you eat the whole thing, 240 calories is not bad, especially if you're like looking for an indulgence. So, <sighs> I like those a lot. Okay, so the last thing I have for you, again, you might notice a theme with grain-free stuff is coconut. These are coconut flour tortilla chips. And these are barbecue flavored. That's why I wanted to save them for last, because <laughs> I didn't want to go back and forth from chocolate, vanilla, barbecue, chocolate. No, let's not do that. So again, these also have cassava, cassava, cassava flour in them. I actually just tried them today. So they're a little overexposed, so you can't really see them, but they don't look the same as tortilla chips, like made out of corn. Um, but they're very firm and they do actually taste really good. So. Nutritional information on these. There's about five servings per bag. About 10 chips is the serving. There's about 140 calories. Only naturally occurring sugar. There's no added sugar. So that's great. And they're low in fat. I love the background, yummy. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for stopping by. Um, we're actually about to finish up, but right now I'm sharing with everybody coconut flour tortilla chips, and these are barbecue flavored. So they're good. I don't really like a whole lot of barbecue stuff, but as you'll notice on the chip, it's not covered in like seasoning and stuff. And that's probably one of the reasons why I like it so much. Look, it's chroma keying out my chip. Isn't that the funniest thing? It's a green screen and the chip is not green, so I don't get <laughs> what's happening here. Anyway. So the flavor on these is very minimal. If you wanted to use them in a dip in something, hummus or guacamole would definitely work. Ketchup chips. Have I ever told you that I hate ketchup? It's my least favorite thing on the planet. True story. There was one time we went to a fancy restaurant in Rhode Island. And I got a veggie burger. And <laughs> the description said, comes topped with our signature or house made tomato basil sauce and I'm like okay I'll give this a try it was just fancy ketchup I had to scrape it all off because it tasted gross I just hate it I just don't like it
but these are really good. So this company says coconuts are known as a source of healthier fats and produce a stable nutrient dense oil. Coconuts contain lauric acid and caprophilic acid. Coconut meat has a high fiber content, which is shown to have digestive benefits. So to give you an example, in one serving of these chips, it does have five grams of fiber, which they say is about 18% of the daily recommendation for fiber in your diet. So these are really good. I was actually surprised at how much I liked them. Like I said, they're not very, very flavorful, but they are good. This one has a little bit more sprinkles on it. Okay. So I see what the problem is here. They don't evenly disperse their sprinkles. So the brand is the real coconut. If you get these, just know that you'll have to eat a couple of them before you actually get the barbecue flavor. So yeah. Actually, I feel like this would go really great with guacamole. If you want a snack, a paleo snack, get some guacamole and some of these coconut flour chips, and you'll be on the right track. So does anybody have any questions about the stuff that we tried or anything else that you might want to know? Do you want to see the dog? Come here, dog. Come here, dog. He's rusty. Can you sit? No, don't eat the wrappers. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> So next week, I will be back with the videos. I have one more video, and then hopefully we will be switching to streaming live from the kitchen. Super exciting. Cable says, hi. Hi, Rusty. Um, do I have a blog post with pictures of those snacks since I missed most of the stream? I don't, but I can make one. This was kind of an impromptu thing, so I don't really have anything planned. But yeah, I'll definitely put something together. I'll put links in and mention all the brand names and stuff. So if you guys want to check any of the stuff that I mentioned out, you'll have all of the information. Okay. So if that's it, I think I'm going to get going. And thank you guys for stopping by. And uh, I'm not going to bother with the credits because the only follow I got was a troll. It happens. <laughs> Post them in MVP's Discord. I want to see how many of those can be found in Canada. I will probably do both, just because you mentioned it. All right. So me and Rusty are going to go make dinner. And then I might actually do some yard work, so that'll be fun. But thank you guys for coming. I always have a great time hanging out with you. And um, I don't know if I'm going to be, like, making my own Discord or whatever. But if you ever have any suggestions for me, you know where to find me. You can send me a whisper or... You can come in MVP's Discord, or you can go to my Facebook page, or find me on Twitter, whatever. Um, I'm very open to ideas, and with the ability to stream from the kitchen, my options are increased, like, infinitely for the amount of stuff that I can do. So, But yeah, I had a great time, and I will see you next week, hopefully um, at 3 o'clock, but we'll see what happens. And yeah. So we're going to go.